In 2024, these are the VR headsets that I recommend. And before we get into that, just a quick word from VR Wave because they do produce the best lens inserts for your VR headset. And whether you wear glasses or not, I'd highly recommend that you pick up a pair of either Plano lens inserts or prescription lenses because wearing glasses in VR, well, it will scratch your lenses and it's very uncomfortable. Plus, if you know you suffer from motion sickness or insomnia, blue light filters really help with that. I'll have a 5% discount code on all VR Wave inserts and they are sponsoring the channel because they are the best that I've come across to date. Let's start with the Pico 4. That is my first VR headset that I actually do still recommend in 2024. It is a really good deal these days, actually. Um, the price, I'll put it on the screen now, for what you're getting is really nice. The pancake lenses, while they're not as good as others that I've come across, they are still pancake lenses in a day, and that means a really nice sweet spot very little glare and very little god rays. The thing about the Pico 4 though is it's something about the sum of its parts which make it into a really exceptional headset. It's the balance of the battery on the back, the fact that you don't need really any accessories apart from perhaps an AMVR facial interface and you're good to go. Um, I think generally speaking it performs really well wirelessly using VDXR now. I was actually really surprised when I first reviewed this headset because I was all ready to kind of slate it and not be very impressed with it. But this is a dark horse in this particular series of VR headsets that I'm going to show you today. The only thing that I'm not sure about is Pico themselves and what their plan is for this year. There is rumours, for instance, that they're just going into the commercial sector now. There's rumours that there's going to be a refreshed version of the Pico 4 as well as a Pico 5 link. But at the end of the day, right now, at the time's recording, I still think the Pico 4 is a great purchase. Before we move on, there's a few things I don't like about the Pico 4, and that is the lenses actually can have a bit of warping on the outer edges. Also, I've noticed that there is quite a bit of mura with the display. I also think the colours aren't that particularly mind-blowing, although weirdly, this is strange, I think the Pico 4 has really good black levels. Right, anyway, let's get on to the next headset that I recommend in 2024. And it's another Pico. This is the Pico Neo 3 Link. Now, at the time of this recording, it is very cheap on Amazon, around £235 or so, and the resolution per eye is 1832 by 1920. It has an LCD panel, a refresh rate of 90Hz, and has a Snapdragon XR2 chipset. Now, the big deal here is the fact this has a DisplayPort connection, which means uncompressed, beautiful VR visuals. Now, this does have Fresnel lenses, which means it has concentric rings, much like what you're probably used to in the past with, say, the Reva D2, the Oculus CV1, Vive Pro 2, all those kind of headsets, uh, which I don't recommend, by the way, in 2024. But the sweet spot is pretty damn good. And if you can find a really good deal on one, this could perhaps replace your Reverb G2, providing, of course, that Pico are in this for the long haul. And at the moment, I can't say for certain especially as it seems VR is an ever-changing industry these days. But as always with this channel, I will make sure to keep you updated with any new developments. Let's now talk about the next VR headset that I recommend in 2024. It is of course the Quest 3. What an incredible headset for the price. The pancake lenses, as I've raved about for so long now, <laughs> is absolutely the best in the business. They beat everything out there, even the high-end stuff. So you're gonna get pretty much edge-to-edge -edge clarity at about sort of 95 to 98%. Also, I think overall the package of the software is excellent. You get a really nice pass-through, especially for the price anyway. I mean, it's not as great as some people are saying, but, you know, you can probably just read your phone screen in the right lighting conditions. But the thing about the Quest 3 is it's just such a great all-round headset, whether you're playing Beat Saber, Half-Life Alex, um, you know, Asgard's Wrath, or Microsoft Flight Slater. It seems that the XR2 Gen 2 chipset means it's streaming better and it's more available for sort of, you know, mid-range GPUs. People in my Discord are absolutely loving this headset um, as an upgrade to the Reverb G2 as well. You know, it's worth noting as well that yes, of course, it doesn't have a display port connection. It, there is screen door effect because of those canted displays. And I do feel that the colors could be better. 
But overall, I think it's an absolutely superb package. And I'm so glad that the MetaQuest 3 exists, especially this year, because it's looking like the most obvious upgrade for most people that don't want to spend, you know, just crazy amount of money on a new VR headset. I think the audio as well is very good considering it's through the uh, strap. The only thing is you do have to spend quite a bit of money on accessories because with this headset you're definitely going to need a new facial interface and a new battery head strap. I do have a best uh, accessories video that if I remember I'll leave a link in the description below. But there's no doubt about it with the advent of again the virtual desktop VDXR um, and with the right link settings this headset does look really really good and i think for most people it's enough it is more than enough for most people and the clarity while it's not quite as pin sharp as the reva g2 it has to be said i am not going to be recommending the reva g2 anymore because it's being discontinued so really this is the only feasible upgrade for most of you out there and actually that's not such a bad thing because this headset is a really really good one now currently this is my favorite VR headset for flight simulation because it has the most jaw-dropping, breathtaking visuals that I've ever seen in a consumer headset. The QLED panel with a resolution of 2880 by 2880 is absolutely phenomenal. It has a spheric lenses. So what that means is, is there is zero God rays and zero glare. I've said all this a million times now guys. I don't want to be a broken record. And I've got tons of videos explaining all of the features of this headset, including its wireless capability, which we've yet to see, by the way, but it is there. Um, as well as the fact this is a PC VR headset with a DisplayPort connection, which is the key here. At the moment, this is now the new, I hate to say it, folks, mid-range PC VR headset. That's right, because with the advent of... Um, the Reva D2 now being discontinued, the Vari Aero. When it comes to full, fat, proper AAA, beautiful, crystal clear image quality, running off your graphics card with a HDMI connection, this is where it's at. It is incredible. But the trouble is, the Pimax Crystal is far from perfect. And even I've had issues, sometimes I'll get to the headset and the battery's drained, even though I thought it's been charging. The Pimax Hub will get rid of that because that is a source of many issues. So just go and buy your own. Honestly, you'll thank me for it later. Um, there's also people in my Discord, I mean, most of them, you know, 90% I would say are very happy, but there are some out there that are having issues with customer service. There's definitely some sort of inconsistency problem as some of the headsets look better than others. Some of the lenses have varying degrees of chromatic aberration. So there is some quality control issues, which is a great shame because the Crystal could be the de facto PC VR headset for the flight simulation crowd for years to come. The only thing is though, and this is just from a personal point of view, folks, because... You know, I can only tell you my own experiences. When I put the headset on and I'm doing what I'm doing right now, and I'm seeing that beautiful landscape, the beautiful gauges and everything, the audio, the whole package, I just friggin' love this thing. And it is my favorite VR headset right now. And it's going to be interesting to see what Pimax are up to this year and whether the 12K QLED will become an actual thing. So watch this space because no doubt I will be receiving one once it's ready, but I haven't heard anything as of yet. Anyway, it's now time to get into the next VR headset, the big screen beyond. Now this one set the world alight with its incredible form factor and micro OLED technology. This is one of those headsets that even though I tend to use a crystal more, I can totally understand why someone would prefer something of this amazing form factor. The way I can describe the Beyond is like nothing else I've ever experienced and it really truly feels like I'm using something from the future. It's just that sort of lack of inertia of movement on the head when you're in a combat situation or perhaps when you're in a racing rig. But it's also just the fact that when you're wearing it, you kind of, it sinks onto your face simply because it is molded to your face because of a face scan, which you all know by now. If you haven't, just check out all my reviews. I'm not gonna go into all of that. But it's also that micro OLED technology. The colours are, well, it's quite hard to describe what they're actually like because they are 
absolutely mind-blowing, like way better than anything I've ever tried. Because at the end of the day, we all know OLED rules and we all want a 4K OLED VR headset a, of this kind of form factor. Well, this is the closest we've got so far. The only thing is, well, there's two things actually. This headset, because of the crazy magnification and stacked lens design that it needs for this form factor with the pancake lenses, it has a very small sweet spot. So it kind of means we're going back to moving your head around more than your eyes. But then because the form factor is so tiny, that's not so much of an issue as you would expect. Although there is one issue that is quite a bit of a deal breaker and that is glare and depending on your application it may not be as bad as others but for high contrast scenes and particularly for flight simulation looking at cockpit gauges glare is quite an issue and it's quite jarring at times for example at night which is such a heartbreaker because as you can imagine an OLED screen like this in nighttime scenes is just almost like a spiritual experience I've actually said it before in a video it really is amazing but then you see all that glare which doesn't just break your immersion, it can actually start giving you eye strain as well. The only thing is though, I did try using this headset as my daily driver for nearly three weeks, and after a while, I did get used to the glare. That's not to say I didn't see it anymore, it's just that I kind of accepted it. But it wasn't until I went back to the Pirates Crystal where it just blew my mind all over again, because you've got such an amazing high clarity with like photorealistic sort of glossy images in front of you with no glare or god rays or anything and for me personally it's too much of a deal breaker for me to have this as my favorite vr headset but it's close and it's actually my second favorite vr headset uh, for flight simulation so you know i think for their first outing big screen beyond have done a fantastic job and i can't wait to see what they're going to be doing in the future now I've got the opportunity to go to Prague to see Somnium Space to check out the Somnium VR1, a new VR headset which boasts very impressive specs. In fact, actually the display is similar to that of the Crystal being 2880 by 2880 with their QLED panel. However, the spheric lenses in this are what I class as pretty much a Gen 2 design and they are much better than the Pimax Crystal. It also has a very impressive field of view because it has dual aspheric lenses, which provide, well, for me, I measured 120 degrees field of view and up to 124 degrees field of view at one point. So that's very impressive compared to the crystals 102 degrees. Probably doesn't sound like a lot, but 20 degrees is actually quite significant. It makes a big difference to the whole thing. Now, the Somnium VR1 is a very high-end headset, and it certainly feels like it as well. Even from the prototypes that I've used and tried during my demo, and that is important to note that I haven't got one here, so I can only sort of report on the sort of demos that I tried at their headquarters, it really did impress me and I really did love the pass-through as well. The um, XR capabilities of the VR1 means they have dual 12 megapixel cameras and the whole thing just really feels like an absolute next generation VR headset. Yes, it is quite big compared to say the likes of the big screen beyond, but the company does not want to sacrifice image quality. And if that's your thing, and it certainly is mine, then the Sony VR1 is looking to be an absolutely explosive headset for 2024. It does come at a very costly price, but then it is a startup company and from the European market. And keep in mind, they can't subsidize their headsets and lose loads of money. You know, this is something that they need to make some money on so they can put it into research and development for their next VR headset. But for what I've seen so far, I'm very impressed with it. And hopefully I'll be able to give you some more information and some more hands on, you know, real world sort of flying videos and that kind of thing at my own man cave to give you a full in-depth review very soon. But I had to put it here because I do feel that the Sony VR1 is, well, a very niche headset for a very high-end prosumer market. But then that's what this channel is in many ways. And it does fit that bill very, very nicely. In terms of the Varia Aero, well, I cannot recommend it anymore, guys, because it's being discontinued and the support is going to end by the end of 2025, which isn't very long at all. However, if you do have an Aero, 
then I don't think you should upgrade to anything. I think you should just enjoy it. Keep in mind, you know, after 2025, you still can use the headset. It's okay. You know, it's not just suddenly going to become a brick. And I do like how Vario has sort of different versions of the Vario based software, which you can download, you know, older versions. It still has a fantastic display. It really is an amazing VR headset. You know how I feel about the Aero. That hasn't changed. Although I cannot recommend it as a new purchase for Aero owners. You know, those of you who have already bought one, don't worry about it. Just enjoy it. There's plenty of life left in it. It's just that it's just sad that Vario can't just eke out a couple more years of support for this headset. I am absolutely heartbroken beyond belief that uh, Vario have ditched the Aero. But thankfully, we do have other choices and VR headsets out there to fill that void for the future. Thank you so much for watching. I think that will do for this video. I haven't mentioned the Vario XR4 simply because I haven't tried it yet and I think Vario is still sending me one but I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with that one. So for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please feel free to subscribe. I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.